Number 64. On a certain day, the temperature is 25 degrees Celsius and the relative humidity is 90%. How many grams of water must condense out of each cubic meter of air if the temperature falls to 15 degrees Celsius? Such a drop in temperature can, thus, produce heavy dew or fog. All right. So anytime you hear relative humidity, I would highly suggest you think about this formula over here on the right-hand side. It says that the percent relative humidity at a certain point in time will equal then the vapor density of water vapor in the air. Okay, this is the actual amount of uh, water vapor in the air. Okay, actual density of water vapor that is. Divided by then the saturation vapor density, this would then be the theoretical maximum value of the density of water vapor in the air. Okay, this is a function of temperature. This is a function of temperature. And this is where the table comes into play. If you notice as the temperature changes, what happens to the saturation vapor density? It also changes, okay? So this is always correlated with the temperature. And then we would just take this and multiply it by 100. Okay, so forget about the question for right now, just the first statement. What can we ascertain from the first statement? Or what additional piece of information can we uh, glean out of the first statement. Well, it tells us the relative humidity is 90%. So that means I know this variable. It also tells us the temperature. Now, by knowing the temperature, I can go to the table, find 25 degrees Celsius, which is right there. And then I also know then the saturation vapor density, because that basically is a constant number relative to the temperature. So I also know this piece now. And what that means is that this equation has one unknown, essentially the actual vapor density, okay, of the water vapor. That's what I can solve for, all right? So let's just, let's solve that. So let's plug in the values. So here we have now 90 to 90%, 90.0 .90 will equal then VD all over the 23.0 gram per cubic meter. Don't worry about the, the units are fine, okay? You can convert it to kilogram per cubic meter, whatever, but it doesn't really matter because this is simply a ratio. So the, the units are okay to leave in gram per cubic meter. You just gotta be consistent. Know that whatever units are up here better be the same as down here, okay? So multiply by 100. So now we would simply solve this by doing Right, cross multiplication here. So it would be 23.0 times then the 90, all then, all then divided by now the 100. And we can find now the vapor density. All right, so let's see. So we get 23 times 90, all divided by 100. So 20.7, so 20.7 gram per cubic meter. All right, what does this mean? Well, why don't we take a little, why don't we, why don't we make a little picture quickly? So pretend this little box here is going to be, try to draw it to the best of my ability, which is, as you can see, my ability is not that great here. So thank God for autocorrect. Uh, so let's pretend that this is one cubic meter, which means that it would have a one meter by one meter by one meter um, length, width, and height. Okay, so at, at, uh, 25 degrees Celsius, 25 degrees Celsius, we know that the maximum density of water vapor in this volume, okay, or the maximum amount in terms of mass of water vapor in this volume would be 23 grams, okay? That's what it means. 23 grams per cubic meter means that in one cubic meter, there would be 23 grams of whatever you're talking about. In this case, we're talking about water vapor. So I know that this represents the max, 23 grams of water vapor of H2O is the max, okay? At this temperature. What we found then is if it's 90% relative humidity at a certain point in time, that means the actual amount of uh, water vapor in the air is going to be 20.7 grams. Okay, this is the actual. All right, so notice how we haven't exceeded the maximum yet. Okay, so that's good, right? That means that uh, the water, this water is able to be um, evaporated in the air and there's going to be no water essentially condensing out of that air. 
All right, the only problem comes when this value were to exceed the theoretical maximum, okay, amount of, of water vapor. So I was going to ask, are there any questions? But if there are, I won't be able to hear. So, uh, yeah, if, if there's, if there, hopefully there's no questions. All right. <laughs> um, so now what we need to do is now they're asking us how many grams of water must condense out. Ooh, that sounds scary, right? How am I going to, don't worry about that. Let's just focus on now the uh, temperature. Okay, let's focus on the temperature. So the temperature now tells us, okay, if the temperature now falls to 15 degrees Celsius, what then is the maximum uh, amount of water vapor in the air? Well, you would go back to your table. Here's 15 degrees Celsius, and it tells us the saturation vapor density now is going to be 12.8 grams per cubic meter. So what does that mean? That means now that this same volume, okay, I'm going to try to recreate the box as best as I can. That means now that the same volume, and this is, this is becoming embarrassing at the moment. Sure. Um, so this same volume, one meter by one meter by one meter. Now when the temperature is at 15 degrees Celsius, the maximum now amount of water vapor, the maximum mass of water vapor is now going to be 12.8 grams per this cubic meter. This is the maximum amount now. But wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. What did we start with? We actually had this amount of water vapor present, right, in that volume of air. We had 20.7 grams. So hold the, hold the phone, right? If we had 20.7 grams of actual water in that volume of air, and now the, only, the maximum is going to be 12.8 grams, right? That's the max now. My question is, where did the remaining go? It condensed out. It had to condense out. Okay? So basically, I can come up with now a... a a uh, simple formula. I could say something like this: uh, that the uh, that the amount amount condensed will be equal to then the uh, the vapor density minus then the uh, saturation vapor density, basically. But the only thing though is is this value cannot be negative. A negative amount condensed means there is no thing condensed. There is nothing condensed, okay? So you can plug in the values. If this thing is negative, just know that nothing's condensed. If the value is positive, that is the, amount, that is the value that is the, that is the amount that is then condensed, okay? So I could say that the amount condensed would be equal to the 20.7 minus now this maximum, okay? So this is 12.8. And the amount condensed will then simply be the subtraction of 20.7 minus 12.8. And it works out to be 7.9. So 7.9 grams, okay, would be the actual amount, the actual mass of water that is going to uh, condense out of one cubic meter. Okay, this is the answer. Notice if you applied this formula to the prior case, right, nothing would condense out because the value in here would have been negative. You would have taken 20.7 minus 23, the answer is negative. So nothing condenses. Only when the temperature now drops and this water vapor here, the 20.7 grams, where's it gonna go? It's not just gonna disappear, right? It, 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 it doesn't just disappear, it has to go somewhere. So it's not going to be quote unquote dissolved in the air or evaporated in the air, not all of it. Only this amount will be evaporated in the air, but the remaining then amount of 7.9 grams will then come out of that air essentially as dew, or AKA as just liquid water. Uh, all right, guys, I think that kind of sums it all up. Hopefully this makes sense. If it does, subscribe. That also makes sense. And we'll see you next time. Take care.